we are seeing live in the time right now together this very large rise to the upside on Bitcoin. I'm going to be talking you through this price action, taking a look at the order flow and explaining how we can use this information to take actionable trades together. This is going to be a good one. Let's go jump straight into it and let's go into the charts. So we've obviously been going sideways for almost 12 days after we saw that flush to the downside from $29,000 to $24,000 very quickly. We of course then had a period of sideways movement. From that period of sideways movement, we become more and more constricted. And what this gave us was this price action almost, you know, symmetrical triangle like. So this was from my um, live stream this morning. So I was, you know, analyzing, okay, we've got the Bollinger Bands really tightening up here. We've got very constricting price action. You know, we're looking for a break and we actually broke just as we were reaching the apex of this triangle. And as we can see, a very large, quick break to the upside that was. Uh, on declines of open interest. So that initial rise here uh, was, you know, the start of a short squeeze. You know, for me, it was very important. I want to explain, I have had a bearish bias, uh, but it didn't mean I was shorting at the lows. One thing I want to remind you is my shorts have all been from higher, $30,000 plus. Okay. After a large drop, this isn't the time to be panic shorting. I was after that NPOC, but of course that hasn't been hit, but that's fine for me. It's a simple case of, okay, let's jump and trade the charts. And you know, the next question is, do I have a short trade now? I had two short opportunities today. One was at, the biggest one was at $27,000. Second one was at a daily where you went straight through that daily. So it's like I said to my team, no reaction at all on the daily. So there's no short trade to be had. Look for higher. My next target was 27 K. Um, also, we're seeing the stock market rise right now. And that, of course, helps Bitcoin rise, by the way. And then we hit 27K. And for me, you know, still not shorting Bitcoin here. We've hit 27K. Um, but, you know, there's no bearish reaction for me. Thus, I'm not going to take that short trade. So it's as simple as that. The way I do my analysis is I mark out my levels, then wait for the reaction. If there's no reaction that's bearish, I will not take a short and I will look for higher. I will then wait for my next target and check the reaction. So my two levels of interest for shorts have had no reaction, thus no short trade to be taken. So now we're in this situation of, okay, using that information, what are we looking for next? Well, here we can actually see a lot of longs piling into the market. So that initial rise, decrease of open interest. Now we're getting the absolute opposite, large increases of open interest with high positive delta and very high volume. OK, thus, I am not interested in the short here either. There's well, preferred scenario for me would actually be a move up and above twenty nine thousand dollars. OK, this has been a scenario I've been talking about uh, and it was the short squeeze scenario. And for that to activate, we needed a break above twenty seven K. We are now currently trading above twenty seven K. So if we back add back on that barrier of the old range that we were looking at. OK, and this was our range high there around twenty seven K. So we got now uh, the scenario activated where we are actually looking for twenty nine thousand dollars. OK, and for it to you know continue upwards here. So does that mean I would long right now? Well, I personally wouldn't long here. We'd be looking for a decrease in potential bat test. Right. Just as when I was explaining, I was higher term time frame bearish. Doesn't mean I'm just going to short at the low of the move. Right. No, we're going to wait for rises in price. We didn't get a reaction. We didn't get a reaction. So I'm looking for my next rise in price to $29,000. And here at around $29,500, I will look for my next short trade that will still hold within this overall bearish downtrend that we are in. Okay. So that would be my next level of interest for a short. But what I'm not going to be doing is shorting from 26K to 29K. That's an almost 10, 15% rise. You know, I haven't long to this. Okay. I'll be transparent. I haven't long to this, but I'm not shorting it either. So thus that sat in spot, I am able to take advantage and make money on the spot assets that I have on this rise, right? So for me now, it's a matter of using the information that I've got, I can check reactions. There has been no reactions thus far, thus no trade. Then I'm looking at the order flow. For me, this is as it stands, healthy breakout. Thus, I'm going to be expecting higher to come. And I'm really looking for around 29,500. OK, uh, zone here around this weekly is my next big level. And then we all know above that 30,500. So I'm looking at the charts. and I'm saying there's a 
very nice probability to be looking towards twenty nine thirty thousand dollars okay so where would be my scenario where i would say that is no longer the case that would actually be if we see a failed auction there is no swing failure pattern here if we see a failed auction that would mean trading back down below the low old highs so you're going to really be using that twenty seven thousand to twenty six you know eight hundred zone if we trade below here, that would be a failed auction with hundreds and, you know, <laughs> we're talking about a lot. Of course, we don't have the full volume yet because we'd have to see this downturn. But we could be expecting, you know, several million, OK, potentially 100 million trap longs above the high. OK, but that is an if clause. That is an if scenario. If we get the failed auction, then that would be, yes, very bearish where we could then look for that short offer the failed auction to have targets back down towards $24,000. You understanding the game here and how it works? We're trading in probabilities. We are marking out our levels. We are then, once those levels are getting hit, checking the reaction. That can be a visible reaction on the chart and also combining this with order flow. From here, we have to make another informed decision from where we are here at 27,500. My informed decision is not to take a short here and look towards 29,500 to 30,500. Okay, those are my next two big levels. If I miss the short because there's always that potential that we just fall straight back down from here, that will mean I will not short the high. Just as I didn't long this low before the rise, there is the potential that I do not short here and we drop, right? That's just part of the game. You don't take every trade. Um, you know, what I'd be looking for is a failed auction. So if we start to trade below 26,800, well, that's where I will then look for my short trade based off of the failed auction and then look for that large rise to the downside. So I would have my short entry based off of a failed auction set up. So, you know, that is the urgent information that I wanted to bring you here. Uh, the way I've traded it today, the way that I viewed the market, I was very, you know, adamant to my team, although... Uh, you know, I do have a bearish bias. I'm not going to take the short down here. You know, there's no short for me at 26K, right? We just got to, you know, I was looking for lower. It didn't come. We broke to the upside. That's fine, right? My next levels were the daily, which I had a feeling we weren't going to get a reaction from. Um, we didn't get the reaction from, so that feeling was good. <laughs> and then from there, it's 27K. There was also no reaction, so no trade. So from here, I'm saying to myself and my team, I will only take a short if we trade back down below this channel. If we do, that for me is a failed auction and an actionable short trade. Okay, I do not want to short where we are right now based off of the order flow. These at the moment are, you know, this is considered strong order flow. It's only weak if we trade back down below 26,800. Then we have all those longs trapped, right? Unless that happens, this is thus far a legit breakout. And again, there's one thing that, you know, is very easy uh, is that that's called like hindsight analysis, right? So in, in hindsight, you know, you might get a lot of people saying, oh, why didn't I long? That was such an easy long trade. Uh, you know, you know, a lot of hindsight analysis of, oh my God, it was an easy long. Why didn't I take it? It was in front of my eyes. Just as if we get the failed auction, there'll be a lot of hindsight analysis of, oh, that was such an easy short trade. Why didn't I take the short trade up? You know, so everything's obvious in hindsight, right? But we are analyzing this live in the time. We are then taking trades based off our analysis and the data that we have presented to us right now. So that's not you know, think about what could be or what might be. Let's trade the charts. Let's trade what we have in front of us. Use this and understand it is a probability and, you know, record. I want you to do this for yourself. Journal your thoughts right now. I've explained my thoughts. You might not have the same. Journal your thoughts. Write down the data. Write down the reason for your trade if you have one or where you're planning to take it next. OK, then give it 24 hours. Give it a week. See if that trade that you've thought out and planned now come to fruition, whether it won, whether it loses. OK, that's how you're going to start to build statistics. That's how you're going to start to gain confidence in your trades based off of the plans and execution that you carry off of them. OK, I have explained my plan, which would be for higher to around twenty nine five hundred. Then check the reaction or alternatively, if we drop from here, for me, that is acceptable. I'll be looking for the short off the failed auction at twenty six eight hundred. Those are my plans. Those are my levels. If you want to take some inspiration and, and use them, you know, you absolutely can. <laughs> uh, no financial advice, of course, is just my opinion and commentary of the market. But, you know, that's personally what I'm going to be uh, looking for something like here.
If you want, you know, these live in the time updates, the live streams every single day, you got live streams every single day. You have market analysis from myself and the rest of the team. You know where to get it chartchampions.com that's where you got all the educational content all the live trading streams and all the analysis and educational library if you want to see that you know where to get it right <laughs> chartchampions.com i'm going to wrap it up there i too want to get back to the charts here keep monitoring the order flow for me yeah obviously starting to see a little bit of shorts pick up now if we come down to the three minute chart you can see there's a lot of uh, you know, there's, well, we actually see the decrease in open of the 7.2 million. Okay. So that's some longs, uh, closing out here or taking profits off of that rise, which is an acceptable. That was like another 1% rise to the upside. But as I say, this for me is not weakness as of yet. I will continue to monitor the order flow. And for me, that weakness would really start to activate below 26, uh, 800. Then I, yeah, I think it's acceptable to target back down to 24 K. Okay. Of course we can be looking at this, uh, fixed range pool, which is the current range that I would pull for a fixed range. So you can be aware of uh, levels off of this, such as the range point of control. If this actually wants to come into play, <laughs> uh, that's back down at 26K. So yeah, 26K would be your first support. And then if you lose that, I'd be looking down to 24K. So I hope that has all made sense. I know I've gone through this very quick, but I think you can hopefully understand. <laughs> you know, this is uh, a few moments of downtime that we have before one of those plans comes into play. I wanted to get you all ready for that. I wanted to explain how, you know, we have broken out here. There's no short, even though I have a higher term time frame bias, which has not changed yet. We haven't broke above any significant level, right? I mean, from the higher term time frame. So when you come out here on a higher term time frame, we are still you know, not broken out of this above $32,000, right? So as it stands, I will continue to trade the charts. I really believe if we get above 30,500, uh, that's where we'll be looking for 32,000 and, you know, 40,000 plus. But I'm trading it level to level. I'm not going to get too excited. I'm not going to get too bearish. I know my plan. You now know it too. I uh, hope that made sense and I'm going to upload this one onto YouTube for you. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed. If you want to see more, you know where to get it, chartchampions.com. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. And that's me signing out. Goodbye.